All right, so it's been a while since we've talked about the filter calc tool I have at tiny.cc forward slash filter calc. So let's revisit it and talk about some of the updates that have been made in the last six months. Okay, if you're not aware, you can go to the short link tiny.cc forward slash filter calc and you can see a little repo I have here and this is the filter calc tool that oh, I guess are made and put out there last modified for 3.3 back in April been making updates to that as we go the latest edition one is Betaflight 4.0 V7 so every time I make a change that's of any substance I up, uptick the V number here this is uh, for purple copper which I'll touch on in the end a little bonus content for you uh, there's other content here if you're interested in really getting into nuts and bolts. These are the articles uh, that where the math comes from that is the basis of the filter calc tool. So for how phase uh, delay is calculated and how the um, attenuation is calculated as well. And then there's some other goodies in here as well for download. You'll see me point to this for uh, black box trace templates that you can bring in. So as you're seeing me here, even in this video, and I'm pressing, you'll see all the trace setups change. I'll talk about which number I'm hitting, and that's what the trace setups are coming from. So you could bring those into your black box if you wanted by downloading this uh, UAV Tech JSON file. Okay, so back to the filter cap tool. So in here, uh, if the first time you ever downloaded it was in 3.3, it's got reordered since then. And we've added in the biggest thing that's been added in recently within the last couple of weeks, I think it has been, is this attenuation plot. So now in addition to phase shift for each of the filters, which is the bad part of the filter, which is the, the initial authorship of this thing was really to show these two plots on what's the associated phase shift with any of the filters, low pass filters, PT1 filters, by quad or notches, you know, what's the associated phase shift with those. That was the bad part. Now we this shows the good part. This is the attenuation and how they're killing noise. That can ca be calculated in, in a couple different ways. Uh, it can be shown as amplitude or power attenuation, or attenuation in power ratio, or amplitude ratio. So this is amplitude ratio. And so when you're looking at that, what's that mean? This says, you know, 0 0.01. You know, what, what's that mean to me? So if you pop into black box and you run a spectrograph on any of your raw noise, so to capture raw noise in a black box log with Betaflight, you would need to set your debug mode in the CLI to gyro underscore scale. And that will give you the raw noise from the gyro graph, which you can see, the, the gyro, which you can see right here is all these squiggly lines. Um, you can press zero on the UAV tech setups for noise and you can actually see, uh, this one's a little off because I don't have gyro scaled, uh, underscore scaled uh, recorded here, but you'd actually see the vibrations and then you'd see the um, filter gyro trace overlapping and, and you could see it, it would look like this right here. That's what this is it was showing here. So this is the raw noise coming in and then it's being filtered and that filter is taking you know this squiggly line that's has that many swiggles and it's smoothing it out. Now here it's like, wow, I'd really like it to be smoothed more. Yeah, so would I. But then you'd have to apply more filtering to it to do that. And you can see up here, what that filtering is doing is causing phase shift. So it's where, you know, if you imagine you would trace that line through here, it's actually shifting that data off. So what's going into the PID loop is essentially wrong, but it's either that or we send in this really squiggly line and if we send in that really squiggly line into the PID root, d is going to go crazy and your motors are going to smoke and it's going to not work out for you. So we really need to make a balance there for amount of attenuation versus you know what we're getting for, for phase shift. So when you run a spectrum analysis on that raw noise, you'll see that the peak amplitude here of the noise at any given then this is for the entire flight, so honestly, this this noise peak is when I'm down, just forward flight, going you know straight forward flight, and this is when I'm at 100% throttle. So you're seeing it all. But if you pick a certain spot and say, okay, well, what what's that attenuation strength mean? It would be this, you know, this is at 100%. So you'd multiply that by 0 0.01 to get the amplitude of the noise after all the filtering is done. So with the sheet, you can turn filtering on and off. You can move your low pass 
filter values around, you know, your cutoffs. So I can set this to 250. And you can see the adjustment in phase shift and attenuation as well. And you can kind of try to get a feel for how much phase shift is associated with each filter and then how much attenuation you're getting out of that filter. And you can do things like, if you notice here, at 120 hertz for my low pass one cutoff, the amount of attenuation I get, the amount of phase delay. And if you move that up to 130, you can see you get a lit, very little bit uh, less amount of latency, but your attenuation didn't change that much either. So as you move these low pass filters up, you don't get a huge reduction in, or a huge, yeah, a huge reduction in attenuation. And you, I would say pound for pound, you get more reduction in latency. So it's a trade-off that, you know, may be worth exploring, especially with Betaflight 4.0, which hasn't been released and stable yet, and it has the final dynamic notch improvements. But um, something to think about. One thing I've noticed is you know the default used to be 90 hertz for the low pass uh, filter cutoff you know, on the gyro and look at the amount of latency associated with that and the amount of attenuation and if I move that up to 120 watch this latency you know we're up here around uh, six milliseconds that drops down almost half a millisecond and it's only 30 hertz higher and if you look at the amount of attenuation you lost, it's not really that much. It, I mean, this hardly moves. Now, as you go above 120, you know, if you jump up to 150, you know, it's a decent amount, and you're, you're not really losing much attenuation. So the filters, the low-pass filters, just really aren't that touchy. You can go ahead and move those up. Your latency drops off pretty well, but your attenuation amount doesn't. So you'd have to step it and... and We'll talk about that here in a second with what purple copper is. So what you can see here too is what's this big V? Well, that's the dynamic notch. And as you move um, the throttle up and down, there's a little throttle indicator here now that you can see that that dynamic notch is trying to emulate where your motor noise band is. And right at the center of your where your peak motor noise is, that's you know this big dip here in attenuation or this big spike in max attenuation that's what a, a notch is it is a it has a somewhat narrow it's unfortunately it's that narrow um, it can be made wider but then the latency goes up the uh, somewhat narrow but in that narrow theoretical center of where the dynamic or where any notch is you get a almost infinite amount of attenuation now some people will say that notch filters cut out data and that's not really true I mean there's no data to cut out it's a continuous stream of data what that means is when these noise vibrations you can see these spikes here in the background we turn this off when these get to 200 Hertz and and say the notch is centered at 200 Hertz so when these the gap between here and here use an M for mark point in black box would get to 200 Hertz and you can see right here it's at 100 and, uh, 130 so let's just say when say the dynamic notch is, is right on 130 or had a static notch in the center was set at uh, 330 sorry that it would totally smooth it out see how it's not totally the the um, signal here is not completely smoothed out it still has a little bit of a jut in there well if it's right at the center of the notch it's going to be completely smooth like this wouldn't have that little up and down it would just be straight across so it's not cutting anything out it just has an unlimited amount of filter attenuation right there and the associated latency with it is is really nothing uh, worth we're, we're concerned about because you know when you're up uh, at 300 for example um, where this is at so let's say the let's right here the, the notch is at 400 Hertz you know the associated phase shift honestly we don't even care what it is but there's really it's uh, you know 0.6 milliseconds of phase shift and honestly we only care about phase shift of the data down here from I would say honestly around 50 Hertz and below 
prop wash is usually between 20 to 50 hertz you know if, if you have a really uh, light machine it might be up to 100 hertz but this is kind of your prop wash zone this is your raw uh, movement zone you know one hertz two hertz up to 10 or 20 hertz that's your just that's the quad moving around again this is your prop watch zone so we only care about phase shift from here up that's why these numbers are grayed out down here we don't really care about phase shift down here so you can see the associated uh, latency with a notch filter is only 0.3 milliseconds whereas a low pass filter it's 1.1 milliseconds so it's much much higher now this is at 150 hertz so we'd have to you know to play to play fair we'd have to bring this down to 150 this is at 150 at the cutoff now this is the center and the cutoffs down here so now we get 0.8 and 1.1 so you can see the associated phase shift with a notch filter is less than a low pass filter so let's compare those things let's set a notch filter at 200 hertz center with a 120 hertz cutoff and then have a 120 hertz cutoff for a low pass filter and you can see the amount of attenuation here now what does this cutoff mean for a notch filter that means where this you can see this down gradient slope in each case it's where we pass negative 3 db which is 0.75 uh, amplitude ratio in reduction of of noise so it's you take the peak noise times 0 0.7 uh, it's not 0.75 it's 0.7 zero seven um, or just in easier terms negative three decibels same for both and then as it as your noise or your motor vibrations are going above 120 hertz approaching 200 hertz this attenuation gets stronger and stronger uh, for the notch filter and when you're looking at these numbers when i mean stronger and stronger this is one times the amplitude so that's weak obviously it's the same amplitude so as you're going down here and you get to 200 hertz you can see it's zero and in reality at the absolute center it's infinite so the equation errors out so I've had to do just an if statement here and just say okay well, let's just use negative 60 decibels just to show this big cut because honestly this cut goes down forever um, you know when you're looking at the math and I wanted to jump in here and show that you can see this in real flight as well. So in front of you here, you see a plot of a plasma tree noise attenuation graph. The middle graph, waterfall graph, that says debug is your raw noise. On the left is your gyro filtering. And on the right, the, not the very last column on the right, but the second to last, where it says D-term, that's your D-term on the roll and pitch. And you can see there's a notch filter set around 200 hertz. So it's cutting the raw noise. If you look at the far left, you can see the dark blue. But that cut is so strong that it even notches through and your debug traces as well. So the debug, which usually amplifies noise like crazy, there's no noise right at the absolute center of the notch. So there's no noise there to amplify. And you can see that cut go straight through. So the math points to it, and in actual flights, you can see it. So we can graph those two things and we can look at the ratio of attenuation versus associated latency. And if you look here across the entire spectrum for this example, the notch filter, you know, higher is better here. So a higher uh, result, so it's attenuation over latency is better. And you can see the notch filter is just more effective and it's super duper more effective right in the center. This is the amount of attenuation associated with the latency at the center and it just spikes up to infinity honestly through here so again the notch filter is not cutting out data it's just really smoothing it out right at the center and secondarily across the spectrum it's just more efficient don't take my word for it read these articles and look at the math yourself the math is built into this excel spreadsheet as well so play around with this uh, you can change these from pt1 to buy quad move the filters up and down uh, put the defaults in here one question I get a lot is what, you know, it's this balance. What is the appropriate amount of filtering? So let's look at that here real quick. So in the last video I did, or two videos back, I guess, we talked about prop wash. And I think that's kind of the, the final frontier here for quadcopters. We really kind of fixed the bounce back thing. It's just prop wash now at this point. And what is the amount of filtering? Well, the amount of filtering that's appropriate is just enough. 
So if you have a low inherent bass noise and you can turn your filtering down, do it. You know, turn it if you can if you have a low enough inherent bass noise and you can turn all your filtering off, do it. But how do you know when you went too far or you turned off too much filtering? They'll use the motor heat uh, example, and obviously that's one indicator as well. But I would encourage people to look at their gyro traces and their and their D their D term trace, honestly. Because you want to be able to give a consistent message to the pit sum to drive it during a prop wash condition. So go out, do some prop wash turns, and then come look at your gyro trace. This is uh, trace setup number three. And look at it here, and you can see this is your, uh, your pit error. And then when that's going down, your D-term should spike. And you can see it's doing that, and it's giving a nice consistent message to the pit sum to, to fight off prop wash. Now, if that's jagging up and down and it's all over the place, it's probably not giving a great message. And you really want to look down at the PID sum for the overall result. Like, how jaggedy is the PID sum down here? And is, can it get a clear message? You know, is it giving a clear message to the mixer to drive these motors? If your motors are getting hot, the answer is probably no. And that's why they're getting hot, because they don't know what to do, because you're saying, turn left, turn right, no, turn left again. So you probably need a little bit more filtering. And then once they, cool off and you have you know filtering there that, that the motors are not hot then you know take a look at your your gyro trace and, and look for something you know like this uh, to, to some extent where you know it could be maybe a little less filtering here it doesn't need to be a perfect signal but it you know it shouldn't be just all over the place and uh, if it is I, I would offer that that's you know not giving it a clear message and then you know it's you're, you're hindering yourself there now on the flip side of it, if you have too much filtering you might have this nice perfectly beautiful traces but they're based on data that's so offset because of latency here that you know you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot there as well <laughs> so it's a mix and it's different on each quad and that's why you have to look kind of look at it case by case so hopefully with these videos i'm giving you some pointers and you can look at your setup because each person would have to look at their own setup or i would have to look at your setup so on and so forth it, there's no one size fits all unfortunately now in this sheet as well you'll see this throttle value here and what can you do with that well obviously as you ramp that up you can see that the dynamic notch is starting to move and you're saying, oh, okay, at 50% throttle, my noise is at 350 hertz, my center frequency of my noise. Well, how, you know, how do you know that? Well, it's not for you. That, that's my quad. <laughs> you would have to set it for yours. Okay, great. Well, how do you do that? So the only way you can do that is to, I think the easiest way, honestly, is to run a, a plasma tree graph of your quads noise so if you just run a log with debug mode set to gyro underscore scaled and you can throw them in the plasma tree and you can get this plot out now you can either look at your black box traces or use plasma tree but ultimately we're trying to figure out where your noise band is here right so you can see at 20 percent throttle my noise is around 150 hertz and at 100% throttle, my noise is, I don't know, just a little bit over 400 hertz, maybe 420, 420 hertz. So that was in this run um, for that. And then that's where you're coming down to here and setting this. Min, you know, 120, max, 500 hertz. That was on a different set of props, that other log there. And then the starting point is really where the noise band starts. So if you can see here that's where that noise band starts and it's not an absolute you know I'd set that 14 so it's you know down around and this is 10 so 14 is kinda in here that's where that that band starts so that's how you'd set that if you're interested if not just put in whatever settings you want here it's, it's kind of arbitrary uh, when you're moving it around and it's kinda arbitrary where you're you're um, comparing it's this is really a tool to compare things so as long as you compare a consistent dynamic knots location with turning on a, off and on other different filters that's all that really matters so one important thing you might note with this is as I increase the throttle value the dynamic notch moves up and then the latency starts to go down so that's a fundamental thing with filterings as the cutoffs are higher 
the latency on the lower noise spectrums, the 0 to 100 hertz, and like I said, we're really interested between 20 to 50, or I have here for 20 to 80 for prop wash, and 0 to 20 for just raw motion. We're really concerned within these two areas how much latency we're getting for the associated filtering. So with that, let's talk about what is being cooked up right now. And for that content, head over to the UAV Tech Patreon page and consider being a patron of the channel to help support the content, uh, increasing the quality of the content and the diversity of content. I know after we went off of 3.3 and the 3.4 and 3.5 that the static notch filters were turned off by default. And a lot of people were talking about their micros, these noisy little micros with these uh, motors that are very susceptible to heat and temperature and how they were getting hot motors. Well, let's look at why. So what I've seen out there is that the reasoning is when people were using micros before in 3.3 and 3.2 they weren't necessarily turning off the static notches but they were turning on the dynamic notch which was off by default. So look at the amount of attenuation you get. You get these big cuts uh, along the way and then the dynamic filter is moving in between those to cut noise out uh, even more. So with these off by default then that was letting more noise through. Now do you want those on because of the amount of delay that's uh, I would offer no you don't but apparently for these micros it's needed so just turn your static notches back on if your motors are getting hot what other choice do you have okay so that's it for the worksheet uh, I hope this helps I know there's a lot of things to see in there so hopefully it's not too overwhelming if you do have questions drop comments below or hit me up on Facebook a private message if you just have some questions or the uh, UAV tech we have a discord server link is in the video description as well. You can hit me up on the Discord. Uh, if you are interested, there's a, a Patreon access for you know a high higher level of access if if you're you're interested in that at all. Again, thanks, and I hope this helped.